Okay, thank you for your patience. Okay, so the next point on the agenda is to discuss and the project. give us a big picture overview since last we met the state has a budget so so I just handed out um, what's on the um, board docs with just another column added for some more explanation um, it's all everything that we have been talking about I put in some comments and our final budget is twenty two million seven eighty thirty five dollars Total increase of 894000 and almost, well actually, that entire increase is due to the capital project items that we discussed with the capital reserve and the capital outlay project. And that leaves our use of fund balance at only $307,000, which is quite less than we had had in prior years. Any questions or discussions? You also have a whole other packet of information that's paper clipped that has on the top the 1819 Budget Workshop Editions Summary. That's, that's, did you post that one? This one? I said, thanks for doing that. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, from our, all of our community input, which the board has looked at the past couple of years, um, we have the, we've put up the summary of all of the items and whether they sit with um, accepted, more information, or not considered at this time. I have it as a draft because um, I need to go back and make sure this is all totally accurate. I'm pretty sure it is, but it was right before we went into another meeting. Um, and during the other meeting, so I want to make sure it's all accurate. So the first section of summary is just the things that are accepted that are part of the budget on the back as considered with additional information. So we'll come back to that because there are some pieces there that some other folks have some information to share. And then some of the items that were not considered um, at this time. The Finance Committee met on Monday night. We went through this list again. And there were a couple of additional pieces of information that we wanted to make available, and they are in your packet. First two are job descriptions. Sorry, they're a little bit out of order because we didn't kind of have our act together to get them in order. In the budget proposal is the 6-8 School Librarian Technology Integration Specialist. There's a job description there. We have draft on the job description because the tech committee will take a look at this at our next meeting and make sure that it's, um, it meets our needs. The second one is the account clerk typist for payroll and benefits. So I would encourage you to take a look at those. Those will be part of the budget documents as well. Are these well. posted online as yeah. well? We're going to post up everything. The other... And are these jobs, if approved, going to be... Posted. Yes, they'll go through the regular hiring regular process. Hiring the uh, civil service account clerk typist will go through the support hiring process, and the 6 8 school librarian tech technology integration specialist will go through um, the, the teacher's hiring process. So, those were some of the additional items to the pieces that are the, in the accepted column of the summary. Additional things also that are different than the last time we had the conversation. We're additionally adding the eight, the cost, sorry, the cost of AP exams after school, but after school busing, an expansion of offerings and the position of a high school art teacher to 1.0. There's also based on the proposal that the board discussed last time, um, transportation for clubs and extracurricular activities. Yes, and as well, but that's in the in this budget as well as the three thousand for this this year's senior trip. But that's in this year's budget. 
So those were all the items. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Like, those are all the items that we had in that column. If we continue down the page, there's also some items with um, consideration with additional information and planning. One is about the East Hill configuration of teachers, and Ms. Ward is prepared to discuss that a little bit at this time. Still good. Excellent. It's just only four slides. Can I, can I just indicate while um, we're pulling up the PowerPoint, um, we will be having a budget hearing on Monday the 7th of May. Um, all these documents will be posted as well as the budget, the proposed budget. So you'll have plenty of time to peruse them. You know, it's kind of hard to read at the screen like when it's jumping around. And you're more than welcome to obviously come to the budget hearing where you'll be welcome to ask any questions or make any comments that you might have regarding the uh, proposed budget. Right, and the summary is already up there now in the public. Is that six or seven? Uh, so, um, six. 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 Yeah, six yeah, yeah, you can. Six thirty. Yeah. What was six thirty? I believe it is. Yes. Oh, you meant the time. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Six thirty. Seven. Let me double check. Seven. Because I just Monday the seventh at six thirty. Okay. Monday the seventh at six thirty. Correct. I will be. Yeah. Monday the seventh at six thirty. Five seven at six thirty. That's too many numbers all that are close to each other. Okay. So Ms. Ward, if you please share a little bit about what has happened with the ideas that came forward on the budget. Yes. One suggestion was to separate special education and academic intervention services. So next year we're proposing a model where we take our special ed staff from four to three. And the three teachers' special ed schedule will only be special ed programming services that are on students' IEPs. And so those are, at the moment, those are the five the five programs that you see right there. Co-teach, an ELA math, resource, and special class. We were able to, and of course you approved it in some earlier notes, the special class next year, we're very excited, will be an hour and a half for ELA and an hour and a half for math. So three hours for those students. Um, then, so, okay. so where does that one resource go? Oh, it's excellent. Not, the very next okay. slide. Yes. <laughs> so that one resource Perfect. becomes, <laughs> thank you, Scott, mm -hmm. becomes a, an academic intervention services teacher. So we're increasing our current, our proposal is to increase the AIS teachers from one to three. That has been resounding from the staff in the last few years. Um, and this, uh, the differentiated service model that we have proposed on the table is something that I'm probably most excited about. So to increase the services from one to three, um, to have the, those three work as a team that has been separated, they're physically going to be located together, but they're also going to be focusing on different tiers of the AIS. For example, the Wonder Works we've, we purchased, that is the intervention program that goes directly with our Wonder series. So it's focused on comprehension, maybe you can understand inferences, you pop in, you pop out, that type of thing. Uh, the next tier up is then the level of literacy instruction. Right now, that's what we spend most of our time at the AIS with. That's the, the running records, the Fontes and Pinnell, teaching you how to read the nuts and bolts. Um, and then the most uh, uh, intense. intense, thank you, sorry. The most intense is the Wilson language, which is really a group of one to three where it's really breaking down very systemic um, teaching children who the other pieces components haven't worked. So with those three, those three, the three people who do this, if this is what we cho choose to go with, um, it's not that they would only do one, two, or three, because obviously with Wilson it's the most intense, you, you wouldn't have a whole day's worth of Wilson, um, but that would be their specialty, um, and we'd also be able to, to talk about the fluidity back and forth. This year, my AIS team meets every six weeks and we talk about ins and outs and where kids are, um, and to be able to have even more targeted focus on that. It's my hope that our, our reading goal is to be at 66% of the building is reading at grade level. We should be at 100% reading at grade level and this is one of, I think, our biggest steps to get there. So uh, we, we'll never have to worry about uh, not having enough seats or not being able to serve children. We think we need that boost. So if I do my math right, that means we're plus one in total. Yeah. So where does that come from? Which leads us to our next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, I know. Well, it actually is two slides away. I'm sorry. But the, so where that person comes from um, is uh, to 
take from the classroom from gen ed to being a gen ed teacher teaching AIS? Say that again. Please. Um, it, uh, it's a classroom teacher this year would become an AIS teacher next a year. A regular classroom teacher mm -hmm. from lower grade levels? Yes, okay. someone who specifically uh, was hired as a reading teacher and has a reading background. Okay. Mm -hmm. Initially was hired in the district right. as a reading teacher. Um, so, for example, this year I have out of K-5, six grades, I have two grades with four sections, and everyone else has three sections. So next year's proposal would have five grades with three sections, uh, grades one through five, and kindergarten would retain four sections. Um, right now, uh, I had some good conversations with my kindergarten staff. Um, right now, we know of 50 incoming kindergartners. There are 36 in our two pre-K programs. There are 10 in Head Start. We have one little person at Whispering Pines who's coming, and we have three retentions. So my number should add up to 50. Um, looking at what we screened last year, uh, we screened a total of, we picked up 22 kids between this year, last year, and September. I imagine we'll pick up fewer because we offered our full day pre-K. Um, we are starting to call those children in now. Um, but looking at the live births, in uh, 2013, we had 68 live births. So, let's we'll see where we are. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. I love the live births because it tells us who's coming. Um, so, keeping four sections at kindergarten, okay. we have the three and a half hour aid support where the focus is literacy instruction, instruction and recess. But I, uh, my kindergarten teacher, I also talked about how we're going to get the kids the running records. In. You know, A to Z, where they come in at A, they should be at you know DE by the end of kindergarten. How are we going to get them to DE? Um, one proposal that they have put on the table that I think will be effective is they want to do their tier two. So beyond their little classroom groups, they would then do their tier two as a grade level. Um, we have a kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Whittle, who has a reading background. You have Mrs. O'Neill, who has a, a remediation background as well, where they would pull from the four classes to work on that tier two before we even get to the three AIS people that are then waiting to, to help you if you need it. Uh, so that's where we are with kindergarten. And then so they would come from all the kindergarten classes? And pull them for a half group. hour, in okay. addition to their normal okay. literacy okay. time. So yes. Before you leave the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I remember correctly, that's the same number of aides we have now then, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. And so then the, the three and a half hours of an additional aid would take our primary aid um, in our first and second grade, because right now the primary aid is only part-time, it's part-time split primary and kindergarten, and make them a, a full-time embedded first and second grade aid. Um, right now you see where my cohort cohorts stand for first and second grade. Um, my second grade, I've done a mock uh, class list to see how the class lists look um, with the 23. They look okay, and um, the aid support would be an hour and 20 minutes on average per classroom per day. Either one block or two chunks to do the ELA math times. I, I didn't quite understand when you said that would be embedded full time. Could you explain that a little bit more? Um, yes, so the, the first and second grade aid would be assigned only to first and second grade. That's and cover all the first and second grade yes. classes is yes. the model? Okay. Yeah. Um, and now we, we Mathematically, you're going to say that, Stacy, that's, that's more than an hour and 20 minutes among six classes, and that's true. I should have been more specific. So I took the seven, uh, seven and a half hours for the one person who would be embedded in first and second grade. There's also 80 to 100 minutes a day of Karen Diamond uh, pool, the instructional aid in the pool, when the PE teacher is teach when the aquatics instructor is teaching PE, I can assign her to a class. I mean, that's the model we use this year. So that embedded resource, that sounds like that's a full-time job. Is that the current status? Really what I'm worried about is from a budget discussion is are they loaded? Or does the loading change? In other words, do they become benefit eligible now to make sure we've captured that in the budget? Or does the person already that's a already, because the person's already benefit eligible. Current we, we have a full-time person who is three and a half hours as the first and second grade aid and three and a half hours in kindergarten. So they're already needed. Okay. So they already have it. Yeah. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, the answer. Yeah. yeah. Is that it? It is. Any um, other questions or comments? 
comment is it sounds very exciting. We try. <laughs> so we're, we're, we will be very anxious to see the results. Um, can you go back to the slide about um, this one or that one? Is that, is there, you talked about the literacy mm -hmm. component, is there a mathematics? That's a great question, I'm sorry I didn't include that. Um, the, we set the schedule, we'd like to set the schedule so each, so there's three, they would each have an hour to an hour and 15 minutes at the end of their day, 1.30 to 2.30 across the building where one person takes K1 and they have that background, one person takes two, three, they have that background, and then our fifth would take four, five. It's basically one group of each um, from the grade. Any other comments, questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so I guess we're at the point now. No, where we'll we'll there's more you asked for. <laughs> Yeah, there's another plan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but wait, there's more. You were not the finance committee. <laughs> so the other piece we had, had talked about was this year with our Title I funds, we were able to support two aides, one at the high school and one at the middle school. So um, I've asked Mr. DiPaolo and Ms. Gleason to prepare some uh, a, an interim report, if you will, that is part of your packet, and I'm going to ask them to share it um, in summary format. Chris, would you please go first? Absolutely. So currently we have uh, Stephanie Patanza as our library aide. Uh, in our nine period day, she actually has seven and a half directed study periods. So essentially, um, our school library would only be open for two periods if we only had Doris Leverett, who is our librarian that shared with East Hill. She's in our building first and second period. At that time, Ms. Patanza does have directed study, so kind of a guided study hall in a separate classroom. When Doris leaves at the end of second period, without Stephanie in her current place, we would then shut the library for the remainder of the day. What we're able to do with Ms. Patanza as our library aide, she now transfers over to the library the directed study classes now take place in the library, but she's also able to keep the library open so students can access um, checking out books, using the library resources, using the technology that's in the library. Um, and then she also is shared information by the grade level teams in terms of what students can be working on while they're there. If they're behind in subjects, the, the assignments they owe for those subjects, those can be shared on a daily basis generally um, by the grade level teams. As we transition into this this one-to-one -one environment that's coming up, the other kind of vision I have is, you know, the library aid really becoming the hub for helping out students who forgot their Chromebook, need to put their Chromebook on charge. As we bring in the Kaji smart spots, potentially that person in the, in the building being responsible for checking out those devices and helping those students who are going to need access to the, those devices. So she definitely has has played an integral part of. You know, not only helping us with the structure of the uh, directed study, but also in terms of keeping the library open as a resource for students throughout the day. How long has she been doing this now? This is her first year. Okay. Yeah, but I don't remember when we started this. In the fall. It was the fall. It was in the fall, yeah. So do we have any feedback on results at this point in terms of impact? I think that working, I think it goes hand in hand. The, the um, you know, the, the grade level teams meeting on a daily basis and having those conversations about what students owe, where students are falling behind, uh, the, 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 the student coaching that's come into play in terms of goal setting with students. The grade level teams share that information in terms of what's owed to help her, you know, really keep her thumb on students in terms of using that time wisely. There's also students who don't have a chance to be in a directed study because they have a full schedule if they take advantage of um, multiple music electives or something like that, they may not have any time in their schedule to even be in a directed study. So while she sees the vast majority of our students, she doesn't see all of them, so there are ones that don't have the, uh, the availability of having a directed study. I, I was really asking a little bit more concrete. Okay. Is our, is our number of students failing classes going up or down? Year to can year, we, I think. Can we point to impact? Our number of students has remained about the same. The number of classes they're failing has gone down. Okay. That's positive. Yes. Um, I'd also like to ask, what, what is our technological, technology background? 
Um, she, she's someone that we would consider maybe emerging. She, um, there's certain things that she needs, you know, someone to show her how to do it, but once she does it, she's, you know, she's pretty well self-reliant. Um, you know, as we transitioned into Google, she, you know, took part in the basic Google training. You know, that was something she reached out right away when we did the after-school Google workshop. Because I think she realizes, you know, to stay connected as we transition, she needs to stay connected as well. So I don't think anything, whether it's the Khajiit, the Chromebooks, I mean, I think there's, there's so little in terms of working parts in most of those. We're not asking her to troubleshoot the devices. It'd really be just to help manage them. If I remember correctly, that isn't uh, covered by the grant, right? That part. The, the resource isn't. If if we have the person manage the technology that I bring in the manager one, that's our budget. Correct. Right? There's no reimbursement special for that. Correct. That's so not part of what the Title One requirements yeah. are. The working directly with students, the providing resources to students is. So Mrs. Merchant um, is our aide at the high school. She is currently working with 24 students. Um, we intentionally created it in such a way that students went in after the five-week failures. And then if you were passing everything at the quarter, students could choose to stay if they knew that that was, you know, was really helping them and they wanted to maintain that or some of them chose to come out if maybe it was just a momentary lapse of Focus. getting things done. Yes. <laughs> um, so we've had a little movement. At this point, she has 24 students on her caseload. 11 of those are ninth graders. It's tough to give exact, we went from this many to this many in terms of courses. Um, so the way I tried to look at it was, 26 of their grades in different courses have either moved to passing or at least showed improvement. So the way she sort of tracks it is, here's what the students had in these classes for which they came to me, right? So I was, they were failing these two things and this is how. So the 26 of their grades either moved to passing or at least showed improvement. So not all of the students jumped to a 65 or better, but a number of them are at least earning grades right where direction. that are going in the right direction. And a number of them range between like 58 and 64 as well. So right, they're moving in the right direction. Um, there are currently 13 students in grades 10 through 12 who work with her in Academic Success Lab. Um, we've had, over time, again, it's not the same kids necessarily that started. Um, we have had several students who no longer needed the support and moved out. And again, we have some students who really like just that isolated check-in point. And so they stay even though they're, they're passing their courses. Um, but again, in that area, students in that group have shown improvement in or are now passing 25 of the classes for which they were initially being monitored. So they're, again, they're showing progress. They're moving in the right direction. Um, one thing we've noticed, especially with the younger students, and again, I think even just learning this information from the process, is that when she started working with them, they were failing these two classes and that was her focus, and then they sort of dribbled off in the other two. And so we had to, so it's really become important for her with the younger students, and she recognizes that to monitor the big picture. Um, she's been great about meeting with teachers, monitoring what the students need to get done, um, making sure she knows before she sees them. She meets at the high school, she meets with our students in very small groups throughout the day. So she has some students that she only meets with every other day for a period, and other students who need more assistance that she meets with every day. Um, but she is with students throughout the day. In one instance, she pushes into a lab where students were having a hard time completing lab assignments, and because so many of our students are ninth graders, a number of them are in earth science, and so this allows her to be in there, to hear it, to see it, to, and to be hands-on with them in the classroom when they're attempting it. So then when she's supporting them outside of class, it's, it's very helpful. Um, you know, we would like to see this position grow at the last um, principal's meeting that we had. Uh, people were talking about different things that they're doing to extend help both in terms of social-emotional support and extended learning. Um, 
And one of the things I would love to be able to do with this, because we didn't start at the beginning of the year, is make more of a home base for this position, where that's the place the students go, where they have access to their materials. Right now, one of the sort of downsides of it is she moves to different places throughout the building um, because we started it later. And so we'd like to create, um, you know, at Fort Plain, they have this academic coaching center. And it's run by a TA and there are computers and it's just a, a more, um, I guess I'm gonna go, yeah, like just a different kind of energy to it. And I'd like to help build that kind of energy where even when the students aren't necessarily assigned to her, if they're having a hard time with something, they know where to find her, they know where they can get some extra support during the guided studies or different things like that. Um, where also our, our counseling support can go and, and, and support as well if there's an opportunity to do that. Just to build it as more of a, a community than just different individual, you know, supervised academic success lab. Do we have a potential space for that? Yeah. <laughs> Gary's already worked out. No. Yes. It'll be yes. in the new entryway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions? I have one more comment, um, Chris. Um, one of the things I, I understand that this librarian technic, technology integration specialist um, is not going to be a troubleshooter and all that. But one of the things that I would really like to give some thought to, or some, recommend that we give some thought to, is what, if any, additional technological um, competence, competency she might, might be beneficial in her role in terms of helping the students get integrated into this one-on-one -on -one computing system. Yeah. And, and I think the library tech, no, I'm sorry to interrupt you, the library tech specialist, that really will be their role as opposed to library aid, which Ms. Batanza is. When the library, if the library slash tech, no, tech specialist comes in, there, that person would be removing some of Doris Leverett's duties. Doris would be spending more time at East Hill. So the vast majority of that person's day would be in the trenches helping teachers and helping students with that technology in the classroom. That still wouldn't replace the, the person we need to keep the library open, so to speak. Okay, well, but the, the point I'm, I'm making is um, I think for this one-on-one -on -one computing system to have the impact that we would like it to have, we need to get the maximum amount of technological assistance and help, you know, to get it off the ground and, and make it function. And so I still would like to be sure that we're, whoever it is that will be doing this has, if they don't have all the adequate training that we would like them to have mm -hmm. to help it succeed, that we really are sure to provide it. Um, because I just, um, I would hate to see it be kind of half-baked or not quite what we want it to be. Um, because it's really going to be a crucial um, ingredient to the success of that endeavor, I think. So while the high school um, library may have just a smidge more in that terms of that management like Chris is talking about, I think there's an opportunity at East Hill and Middle School with the libraries there to build those skills a little bit more. And I would even, uh, and yeah. I would even because she's going to be in contact with students all day long in the library, okay. maybe some additional, you know, continuing you know, uh, professional development for that aid might be helpful in terms of having her more up to speed in advance of the computers arriving. Yeah. Um, Becky, could you explain the home base? What the picture that I got in my mind was mixed grades going to a home base. Is that what you're saying? As they're where they report when they come to school. Not, not in a homeroom kind of context. Okay. A home, so our students that get assigned to Academic Success Lab, it's essentially a, a, another period of their day, and it was a period that used to be a study hall. And we took them and put them in this much more directed, guided learning experience. I mean it more as a room for them where when they're with Mrs. Merchant, that's where they are, that's where they work. Their materials right. are there, she has around. materials there, mean? yes. Okay. Because yeah. it creates a certain energy, okay. and for, for her to have access to materials that teachers provide her, and, and just be able to set things up in a way that makes it more of a learning environment, 
Um, I think that will be beneficial. And I think, as I was describing, I, I would love her to go and visit the space at Fort Plain, which I've done and, and Jen's done, because it is the vibe. I, and I don't exactly know how to explain it, but the, the students are welcome. They feel good. They celebrate those little successes. They celebrate that, okay, it's a 58 and not a 65, but it was a 24. Woohoo! You know what I mean? We're on the track. We're moving in the right direction. And so um, it becomes a very safe place for those students. And then that relationship and those connections, and then you see more success. And I'm glad you answered the question that came to mind when you first went over the, the improvement. Do we have an idea of the net impact? Again, because... I mean by number of classes that right. went up versus the as, backslide. Well, especially because, as I said, with our younger students, our freshmen, th you know, the two they were failing in, after five weeks that you worked on, they passed those at the end of the first quarter, but then the numbers in the other went down. So, so there, there was an overall decrease in quarter <laughs> two and overall course failures. But if you look at just the students she's working with, it's hard to come up with that net because there's so much change across. So now, she was watching these two in the beginning, and they passed those, but then there was something else they failed, and so we added those two to watch, and then those passed, and then there's just no, so much movement. I, I understand what you're saying, but anybody on the um, Academic Success Lab list, what's their net? Oh, these mm -hmm. two that we were focusing on went up, but, you know, we, they didn't necessarily pay attention to these other two do we we should be able to figure out what that net right is. right yeah and so. I can definitely go back I didn't count for each individual student in that way because I focused on the ones essentially that they started with no I understand but I can go back and look at you know look at those other ones too and again we did have some students who were failing a couple and then are now passing everything and that's why so, I'm looking for right the net, the net yeah. Yeah. I'm just yep. And then I guess, do we have ideas on how we can address that loss of focus on things that they weren't in? What are our thoughts? Well, and, and part of it was her being new to us and to the students, and this sort of being a new approach, she really focused on where the failures were to move them up. And then when we got to the end of the first quarter and we saw some of that, she immediately, so she already does it differently in terms of tracking everything, okay. checking with teachers, getting grade reports across the board. So if that, I think now so we look at it differently, like if that's changed. my student, yeah. it's okay. not my student for English and social studies, this is my student right. for academic success. And so yeah, that changed the process right away. Right. Thank you. So at the end of the year, we'll have another report, but we'll get you that additional information on the net courses. Then we'll, we'll watch and see what our Title I allocations would be, because certainly in a current configuration, the work that the individuals are doing fits the Title I uh, requirements. And that is where those the funding for those positions sat. It was never part of the district budget. It was use of Title I grant money. We received some additional money um, when the notifications came out. Stacey, they cut one in June-ish? June. Soon we should be getting those, so we'll know that information. And let me just make sure there's not there, make sure there's those pages. Uh, yeah, well it doesn't mean there's not more. <laughs> I just want to make sure there's not more. Um, I think that is everything. Um, any other questions about the budget in general before we move to a vote? Just comments or questions. Yes. Um, Leah, I'm just trying to reconcile the number, the bottom line. So when we met on Monday, we had the, we were minus the um, budget change we talked about in executive session, which was 16839, right? But I think the number between the two of these is different than that 16. 4 9 was 285, 465 and change. What, what was that? 
285-465 and change. So we added the, we so we changed the, um, the AD position. I did a little decrease for the pool um, increase that you were talking about. Remember he had a certain amount, I brought it down a little bit. Because we're up more than the 16, that's why I'm asking. I'll give I think it was the art. I don't think that was in there. No, that was in there. That was. Was it in there on Monday? Monday? No, I don't remember. A lot of things have changed since Monday. Um, I don't necessarily remember. I put my notes, but I there had to be one other change, but it was really small. So we're, we have a two, $22,500 change, and the only thing we talked about being changed was the 16839 Yeah, I, I don't have that sheet in front of me. That nets five, six, six, one. Yeah. It could have been a transportation. I think it was adding more to the transportation line for the extra clubs. Or is it, the, would that be the full increases? Well, that we had, I increased it and I decreased it. Oh, okay. So, okay. That's so never mind. Yeah. Everything else we had in the yeah. on that day is still so small. All right, you forced me to get out my finance. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mark. I'd I have to do the same formulas. Thing. like it's in other uh, other salaries professional support went up by two thousand. So that's the transportation. I'm going down the list of them. That's the only change that yeah. I can find. So, yeah, transportation. So, it doesn't quite reconcile. We've got like a $3,100 difference missing. So. Here, here is the uh, other sources of revenue. Um, is yeah, that went down by the 8500 for the For the AP tax. Yep. No. Okay. That, that would add, I mean, that's since our meeting, I mean, this figure is lower yeah. than what we saw. So that would more than recover that difference. So the revenue going down. And our shortfall would go up. Salaries of professional support went down by the 2000, but we went up, uh, we took the 8500 out for the AP, so those netted. Those netted, right. It's almost, I mean, it's off by 100 bucks at that point. Oh, jeez. So it's right. round. So, yeah, and it's <laughs> mostly for the extra. <laughs> <laughs> I can put my phone Is that right? <laughs> Okay. All right. Make it, I think one of the 
one of the things we should do is because there's so many iterations of this, I wonder if as we move into next year we should be thinking about a different way to check, track the changes yeah. so that we have the changes more readily available. Yeah. So if we can just we'll make a note to think about that, like how to track those changes. Because we're, we're regularly, you know, during the finance committee is moving things in and out and all over the place. So we okay. need a method to track changes. All right, any other questions or comments on the budget? Are you ready to move to a vote? Do I hear a motion? Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. So like I said, on uh, the 7th, 6.30, um, you're welcome to bring us any questions or comments you might have. Um, okay, we'll move to con um, approvals. I'm sorry, the um, consent approvals? No, you gotta do the approvals, you gotta do the SSIP. Oh, SSIP, sorry. Since we did that one, All right, so according to the process for the SSIP, the original document has to sit out on the website for 30 days, it has done that. The District Tech Committee met on Monday, April 9th. Um, if you could scroll down, please, on the document, right there. The bullet items for the things that were added based upon feedback, those are the cases, the charging stations, um, and the carts that will be needed to support all of the um, items. And if you have any specific questions about those items, we'll turn it over to Mr. DiPaolo, who's been doing that work, and we appreciate that. The Tech Committee also had quite a good discussion about the differences between different cases and different ways to um, have the students use their devices, um, and our student rep who is with us was very helpful. The second piece is that we were exploring the mobile hotspots, the Khajiit spots, as part of the Smart Schools Investment Plan. We are not able to do that. So a little bit later under old business, uh, Mr. DiPaolo will offer us some um, a quote from Khajiit that we can, it's more information about the mobile hotspots, and we will be able to build that, or purchase, sorry, the hardware in this year's budget, and we did include the service in next year's budget that was just approved. Following, I'll give you the process first and then we can answer any questions. Following this, um, this SSIP review and hopefully board approval, we'll submit it right away to the state on a form prescribed by the state. So that's through the business portal. So that'll be submitted within the next couple of days. Then it goes into the queue. Of, of approval at state ed. While that is happening, the tech committee is going to subdivide into smaller groups to work on the implementation plan for one to one. Because it's got to sit out in state ed for a while. So while that's happening, we're going to, the subcommittee, the tech committee is going to break up into subgroups and work on the implementation piece. So we'll have more on that. Um, no sense in, you know, might as well get it into state ed, let it sit there, and then do all of our other work. So that is where we are. What specific questions might you have about any of this that Chris or I could answer? Um, well, one of, the, one of the difficulties with this is it wasn't posted, so you know, we didn't really have a chance to yeah, take a look at this right. ahead of time. So um, if there's any questions that people have that would require further reading or research, um, I think that would be Great. Nothing has changed except for the bolded items right there. Everything else is exactly the same as it was 30 days ago and it's been posted. So the only thing that's changed are what's called it. <laughs> It'll come back to you. That's it. Those are the only changes. Any questions? The, the changes, were they all increases? Yes. There were additions really around providing cases for the units and then also charging stations. We wanted to have the technology committee meet and discuss the different case options really. Charging stations, I mean, some are taller, some are wider, some have 30, some are 48, they're, they're pretty basic. Um, the consensus was that the vast majority of students would receive a case for their Chromebook that had a handle 
um, that is what's called a working case, meaning you can open it up and it actually has little straps that keep the Chromebook in there while you're working. Um, but there was a thought that maybe we should have a more ruggedized case for certain students who maybe have a, you know, a tendency to drop them, or we have certain students who might not be able to use that style case because they're also going to need a mouse and a, um, you know, for a vision problem or something like that. So that's where the, uh, the secondary um, set of cases came in, the 3180 device wares. For the iPads, uh, because they're being deployed at a K and part of first grade level, we really looked at something that was very rugged but also had tactile handles on it. Um, because a lot of the more ruggedized cases are still pretty smooth to the outside. They don't have anything to grab onto. So there's a bunch of different options. Um, we picked one that uh, essentially is a high density phone that has a folding handle. It can also be a prop stand, but it has you know, a very ruggedized handle where you know, students can grab onto that to use that device and manipulate it. I did remember my other question. You said that we have to wait for it at State Ed. My question was, with the timing that we're doing this, does it still look like our timeline of implementing this in the fall comes together or not? It the original timeline was late fall. <coughs> we are right on track with our timeline. I cannot control what happens at State Ed. No, right sure. now, the time we've planned in for State Ed leaves a little bit of a bumper room. But if, if, if all goes well, yes, we, will, we are right on track. We are meeting, we're right on our timeline. So we're not rolling out at the beginning Correct. of the school year. Correct. We are not. Anything else? Okay. Um, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Okay, thank you. We'll keep you posted. Okay, now we're up to consent approval. First minutes. Well, first of all, we need a motion for consent agenda. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Minutes. Any question on the minutes? I'll see. I know you didn't read them carefully because those forms hot. It said hot sports. Oh, I missed <laughs> the hot sports. Sorry. We fixed it already. <laughs> okay, so any, anything on any of the minutes? Okay, moving right along the budget um, transfer. Anything on that? General Federal School Lunch. I will, uh, I have a couple. Um, on page one, Abelson uh, test prep. That's for the SAT classes. Who are we paying for? SAT prep classes. Oh, who? Which students? Um, for students. All or only some? All. Excellent. Yeah, so for Preston, they have all that they did submit a um, $25 deposit that if they attend the majority of the classes that we spoke about last year. So every Thank single you. one of them is yes. And, and I will waiting this. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, then also, what's uh, on also page one, Go and Mobile? Seventy-five uh, tech equipment, twenty-one thousand. What was the amount? Twenty-one point five thousand. That's some new yeah, that interactive flat panels, smart boards, and um, document cameras. cameras. Yeah. Okay. And then in the um, budget, okay, anyone else? Okay, uh, treasurer's report. I promised I wouldn't do this, but I couldn't resist. Oh. 
Interest. 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 <laughs> I mean, if you look at our general fund, for example, just to give you an example, um, there's $5 million in that fund. And um, we, we made a few hundred dollars in interest last month. So I did the math again and multiplied by 12 to give us yearly interest rates. And it was one hundredth of one percent was our interest rate. And to give you the, the sense of you know, what we're talking about here, if there was a one percent interest, so that, that if there was a one percent interest annually on this, that would be $53,000. From that, from that, you know, and that's just one account. Um, versus what what we're getting is um, four thousand three hundred forty dollars. And you know, I, I think it's it's just bizarre to me. I mean, that we can't do better than one hundredth of one percent as an interest rate. Um, I mean, if I go to a bank and I open a savings account, I can get at least a half a percent or one percent. And we're throwing in millions of bucks, and we're getting one hundredth of one percent. And I just think what, what we really maybe need to do, and this is just this one account. And granted, this is the biggest account that we have, but uh, you know, but if you put them all together, I mean, this could be a couple of teacher positions, or you know, there's a, a lot of money that we're not getting here. That I, I think we really need to do some research, and maybe it has to be the finance committee. I hate to say it, but. Um, <laughs> You pointed to me. I'll point right back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just, I just really, I, I, I just think we have to, you know, look far and wide or something to see if we can't do somewhat better, even if it's a quarter of a percent, quarter of a percent. I don't, you know, but one hundredth of one percent is just criminal. I mean, that's. I don't know off the top of my head what the restrictions are, so we would have to educate ourselves on that and then figure out what our options are. But I mean, I think it would definitely be time well spent, you know, yeah. uh, even if we could just get up into the tenths of one percent, you know, that's a yeah. lot more money, you know, a lot more money. So I, I'm sorry to keep harping on this, but it just drives me bonkers, you know, because I know back when I first started on the school board, that used to be a significant source of income for our district, was the, the interest on the money that we had to keep, you know, there to make the district work. And, um, and we're not getting that anymore. And it's, it's, it's just, with interest rates starting to come up a little bit, I, I think we really need to get on that and stop letting them rip us off like this. You know, it's just, it's criminal to me. I, sorry, I, I'll look at it. I'll try to let it go. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. After the budget, maybe the Finance Committee and Leah can help us understand the restrictions, and then we can look at all the I, I would suggest that perhaps maybe one of our fiscal advisors could come join us. That'd be for that kind of a conversation in the finance committee can meet and then we can move forward from there. Sorry. <laughs> I'll try to stay away from my, my calculator. Um, next, transportation requests. Any, well, there are two transportation requests. Any questions about either of them? Yeah, it looked like it's a private school out of our district. Yes, yes. they live within 15 miles. <coughs> That requires, or is that just our practice? I think it's required. It's required if they live if they live in the district and attend a school outside. within fifteen within miles. fifteen miles outside of the district. Yes. So these are district residents. No, I got that. Yeah. Uh, right. But yeah. Yes. They're going to a private school outside. So yes. That's mm -hmm. why I want to question it. Yeah. Right. No, yes. That's why. Yeah. Is the uh, letter E the two thousand? Um, a child that has become of age that can now ride the bus. Mm -hmm. Her brother already goes there, I believe. Okay. One student already goes there, and now she's... Okay. Okay, anything else? Do I hear a motion? Or you, you, you do still need to... What? Wait, you, you still need to... There's two trans... Did you do right. that? Right, no, he has to move. Okay, sorry, yes. Sorry. Okay, do I have a motion to... Move the consent decree. Oh, we did the motion ready. Go ahead. Let's go to a vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. I'll never get
get this consent approval. Right? Okay. okay, all business, the mobile hotspots. So, um, for your consideration, there is a quote there for, from Khajiit for just the hardware. Um, in talking to the salesman from Khajiit uh, and, and Ms. Grimshaw, we estimated the number of units we were going to pre-buy is 75. Um, that's, that's a little bit less than what Khajiit typically recommends for the number of students we have. When we factor in students with siblings in the district and things like that, we think that's a pretty accurate number. So um, there are two different devices on, on the quote. The majority of them are going to be the standard 4G LTE smart spots. We also included 10 of the 3G slash 4G LTE hotspots. Um, they just have a, they operate on dual uh, bands. So if we have students who are having a really hard time accessing even with a smart spot, it will provide the most comprehensive coverage that basically anyone can offer. So having a few of those at our disposal, they are slightly more expensive, um, we thought would be a, a good idea. In talking to the salesman from Khajiit, we can activate, we can buy these now, we can activate them after July 1 at our convenience or right before the start of the school year. Um, essentially, we can activate as many devices as we want. If we want to start act with activating 30 devices and we find that we need 10 more very quickly, we can activate 10 more. The very nice thing that they will do is they will not um, stagger the contract. So if we activate 30 for two months and we need 30 more, they won't start a new, new contract for those 30. They'll um, set them up so they have the same terminating date. Uh, and then also they can be suspended for the summer months. So we, in essence, in a 12-month contract, we can utilize the 10 months of school, suspend it for the two months of summer, and we still have two months of utilization for the following year. On the more expensive device, yes. is the service plan the same cost for those? The same exact the service plan. Okay. So that would provide um, 500 megabytes or 15.5 gigabytes per month per student. Um, it's just it accesses the bands differently in terms of the technology. Um, I, the, um, the, the sample model did come in. I actually deployed that with a teacher yesterday who lives someplace where he does not have internet and he was able to connect using one of our new Chromebooks no problem. Um, talking to Ms. Schwabra, we uh, picked out a student, a family to send it home with. We contacted the mother. Uh, she picked it up this morning. So we had a Chromebook and, and the Khajiit tester go home with them tonight. So I'll have more feedback tomorrow in terms of how, how well it works. But um, in terms of ease of use, it's very, very simple to connect. I was able to do it in about three minutes. What's the warranty on the products? Um, I do not have an answer to that. Let's get that. Okay. Yeah. We'll get that before we do the purchase record. Is it contract for one year? The contract, they offer 10 to 12 month contract. The devices are ours regardless. The contract is staggered to what we want. So if we want to just do a 10 month contract for a certain number of the devices, if there are devices we want to send home for certain families so they can access things during the summer months, we can choose to do a 12 month contract, or we can do 12 month and suspend your renewal date will just change when we reactivate it every year. I had a question. I mean, can you just explain to me the the Is it a, is it? Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I'm, um, I'm just trying to get a visualization and I'm just not. With me. If you look, up, it's, it's roughly the size of Cheryl's mouse. If you look at Cheryl's mouse, okay. um, it's probably a little bit lower in profile or the mouse right. that you have. Um, essentially, it's got an on button on the front. You hold on the on button, the top of it lights up, it says Khajiit. Once that boots up, it basically tells you to press that button again for information. Yeah. And it, when you press that button, it gives you the hotspot number. So the one we have is like 28 KDE. So once you find that, you look at your computer and it senses 28 KDE. Yeah. You press the button again, it gives you the password to log in. You put in the password in your system, it pairs and you're off and running. Um, they essentially, just like most lithium ion type of devices, it's probably got a 18 to 20 hour working device. It comes with a charging cord, it comes with a cushioned, like hard-sided yeah. case. 
So you think there, uh, one of these devices you'd be able to power up, like if you had a family of two or three or four kids, they could, they, that's enough? They say three to five. Three to five. Um, once you get over five, there's enough lag where it would really bog everyone down. Yeah. But um, a, you know, a typical family with two or three or four or five students, we'd be able to deploy one device that would serve the whole family. All right. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Is the service through Kaji? The service is through Kajit, and then they contract through the wireless carriers. So the ones here are specified for Verizon, because in conversation with him, that is by far the best coverage that we're going to have here. So the contracts through Kajit, which is then through the major cell carriers. In this case, it would be from Verizon. Kajit gets a special price because it is educational based, versus us trying to go to Verizon and get hotspots that we pay, you know. Subscription-wise, pay double to triple for for the same amount of um, coverage. Um, the company said that 75 might be a little light, you know, for this size student body. Um, if we get going with it and we find out that we need more, yes. Um, how how much lag time is there? He owed in my office. He said probably two weeks. Once he has a signed PO, he can he can process and ship. And um, how how do we arrive at the seventy five figure? I mean, how, how, I know it's an educated guess, but what was the so basically the the equation works out what what they sent generally go by through their research is you take the free and reduced number and then you take somewhere around twenty percent of that, which would put put us somewhere around one hundred and five ish students. The plan at the elementary school, really K through three, K through four, is those devices are gonna stay in school. So we'd really only be looking at maybe starting in fourth grade or fifth grade through secondary level in terms of sending devices home with students or for families. When you factor out three or four grade levels, 75 I think would be a very robust number. And if we found that we didn't need 75, can we return it? Or they are ours. They are ours. So you're being conservative, so that we wouldn't. I was trying. Uh, I was trying not to overbuy. Being conservative enough where I thought we would have spares if we did have damage or some type of problem with the device. But also if we're in a situation where wow, we need these right away because the the feedback is that they're working so well and it's helping people out. We have them without a two or three week wait. Okay. Anything else? Do we have to prove that? You kind of prove that already. You just want more information. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. I guess I want to ask. So does that mean we're ordering them? Mm -hmm. Just want to. Yeah, I, I, I can we're share gonna, information tomorrow the about the warranty. warranty. We're going to find out about the warranty first. So we have that information at the ready, and then we're going to order them using this year's funds. Being no new business, I would have a motion to move it to executive session. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we just take a five minute break. Thank you. Customer, or I think I actually have a regional guy in Maryland okay. or Virginia. He's super responsible. Call him in the morning. Okay, thank you. Let's just have that information ready. You probably do have it somewhere. I uh, I have a blurb in my board notes about our trials that we're doing. Yes. So I'll get it early enough. I'll add it on to that. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay.
Yeah, yeah. I was over here. Yeah.